Do you want to add more power to your serve in a very easy manner that you're probably not using already? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the right way to load your legs to make sure you can get more power out of your serve. This can be kind of a confusing and controversial thing in tennis. It's like, what leg should I load? What leg should I load? And I think it's the, ooh, I'm not going to tell you just yet, but by understanding what I think is the right leg to load, you're gonna be able to create more power on your stroke. And hopefully I can prove it to you by the end of this video, which leg you should start loading, and also back it up with a little bit of science or at least a little bit of research. I wanna definitely point out that a lot of this research that I'm depending on or using is from Dr. Mark Kovacs. So de definitely check his uh, website out. I think it's the Kovacs Institute. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, he has a great paper called the eight stage model of serving. And so Dr. Mark Kovacs has studied, he's been in the game and studied the game for so long. And he's depending on a lot of other research from a lot of other researchers. So I think that's really important to understand. But I've also implemented this into my serve and I'm seeing a dramatic difference and I wanna share it with you. So what leg should we be loading? Dr. Mark Kovacs says the back leg should be used to load on the serve. And this is the reason being, is that we wanna take the ground force and shift that up to the ball. Okay, keep that in mind as we go through. We wanna take the ground force and shift that up to the ball. So, what that means is our target is here. When I toss the ball, the ball's gonna be there. And so I wanna use my weight to go up and forward into the court and shift my weight there. Some players say, you know, maybe it should be the front leg. And totally for a long time, I, you see players and what do you kind of see? You see that hip kind of going out and it looks like, hey, the front leg's loaded. And that's what I should do. I'm kind of like the idea before was like you're a, a bow, a bow and arrow, and you're bending your body to snap up. But I think this new concept is much, much better and you're gonna get more out of it. And so I want you to try something when next time you get on the court to kind of help you figure out what leg you should be loading. And so, just think about this for a second. If I load my front foot and I'm trying to thrust up, how much power can I generate? And this is a simple test that I've kind of developed that kind of really showed me like, wow, this does make a huge difference. So if I'm gonna throw this ball here, I want you to load your front leg and throw it, okay? So I'm gonna load my front leg and throw. The ball went maybe five, six feet past uh, the net, not that far. Now, I want you to load your back leg. I'm putting all my weight in my back leg. And obviously, this isn't ideal. This isn't a apples to apples comparison. But the main thing is the driver. The driver. Which leg is the driver? And so now I'm going to load my back leg and do this exact same thing. Ah. The ball went past the service line. And I think the difference is this. The connection between my back leg is also connected with my dominant arm. I mean, I'm a right-handed player, my right leg's gonna be back, and now I can send the energy or the force from the ground to my hip, to my shoulder, to my hand to release. Where you have this disconnection between my front leg, which is now, it can't send any energy up to my hip, or it can't send it to the proper hip, and then it's just arm. And so, can you develop a still, or still have a big serve just using your arm? Sure because there's other parts of your surf that's really important, meaning that when you come out, you're gonna have this pronation action which contributes to about 40% of your serve, meaning pronation and internal shoulder rotation. But just imagine, now, if you have more energy coming from the ground, going up through your body, and then adding that to what is already powerful, how you can have a bigger serve. So now, let's talk about how we can start learning to load on your back leg. So, uh, again, give total kudos, kudos to uh, Dr. Mark Kovacs because he has a couple drills and I want to actually implement a couple of my own drills. So there's two things that you really want to start focusing on when you're loading this back leg. It's not only loading the back leg and loading the weight in here, but it's also twisting to make sure or loading the or sending the hip down so this hip's lower and this hip can come up. The faster um, this hip can move vertically, the more power you're going to be able to produce, the more force you're going to be able to produce. So what we want to start doing is thinking about if the ball is slightly behind me, what I would have to do is get down and you can see how my weight's on my back leg and twist. Now this is a very extreme kind of way of doing it. Another easy way, I think, is just doing the exact same thing, but I'm going to use my racket. And so all I'm going to do is take my racket and have it go down and back. I like this way a little bit better because the ratio that Dr. Mark Kovacs talks about is 60-40, meaning 60% of your weight on your back foot and 40% on your front foot. 
So if I have my rack, or you can see how the, the ball is slightly behind me, and all I'm gonna do is twist and back, okay? Twist and back. So just by twisting, twisting my shoulders and my hips and sending it back, you have this weight here, but I'm not overdoing it. And so this subtle twist and back, twist and back, because I wanna twist back so I can go up and forward. And that's the key. The faster we can get at going twist back and then firing and going up and forward, now we're sending more energy up through our arm and then it allows me to get more pop on the serve. Can you get pace from just using your arm? Yes, but wouldn't it be nice to have even more pace because you're using the right leg drive? Not only this, this is why I think this is so important. I should have probably said this earlier. You're more efficient, meaning that because you're not just using your arm, which will just get tired because you're just using your arm, your shoulder, and your torso, you start using your legs, which means this. You have more muscles doing more of the work, and meaning that not one muscle is carrying all the load. And by doing this, you start realizing that you can serve bigger, longer, because you're just not relying on one muscle. Not only that, you're preventing potential injury of just using one muscle to do all the work. So now, what we wanna start doing with our motion is going down and back, up and out. And so you have this shifting of down and back, and I'm starting to go forward, but I'm shifting my weight forward and going up and out. And also notice from this angle, when I'm down and back, what does this look like? My hip's still going out, but my weight's loading on my back leg, compared to my hip going out, my weight's loading on my front leg. So it kinda looks like the same thing, but there's a different internal feeling that I want you to realize. So I'm going down and back, up and out. Okay, down and back, up and out. And I'm getting way more pace without so much effort, and that's the key. Learning how to use your body efficiently using right leg drive to make sure you can send your energy up through the ball. But that's not it, because here's the one thing when I went through and started looking at all the best servers, well, all the biggest servers, I should say, weren't the best players. All the servers that were the best players comboed their serve with something else, meaning that a lot of the biggest servers had just a big serve. They were just dropping bombs on people. A lot of the best players that won the most Grand Slams, had Grand Slams, won the most tournaments, they comboed their serve with something else. And so it's really important that if you wanna start learning how to combo something else, start looking right here because understanding how to hit a great forehand is a great combo that sandwiches with a great serve.